Hello everyone, so for this video we're going to be um, talking again about region growing um, and uh, in the last video we've seen how to detect uh, markers automatically uh, how to automatically choose marker within uh, an image and now we are going to be using the watershed transform to try to, um, to perform some region growing from these markers and try to uh, achieve uh, some interesting results in terms of uh, segmentation um, so um, here I've loaded the uh, desert image again and uh, I've made a method from the previous uh, video to get the markers uh, of, uh, of an image um, and uh, here I've used the uh, gradients uh, from the uh, scikit image rank filter so this is the local uh, maximum minus the local minimum and I'm taking the um, in that gradient image um, the, the, the markers with a medium distance of 60 pixels and a relative threshold of uh, 50% um, and so there is another um, uh, attribute that I have not talked about yet here which is uh, indices and this basically tells us whether we want to receive the, uh, the, the markers information as uh, an image, a binary image with false where there is no marker and true where there is a marker or if we want to receive it um, as a list of coordinates um, which we can then use uh, the plot method to, uh, to, to, to plot as uh, crosses or dots or whatever we, we want um, and so this will be uh, useful later for, the, uh, for, for actually using the, the, the watershed which requires us to have, uh, to have it in the form of, of, of an image um, but um, here we have so our gradient and our, um, and our markers so how does the, the watershed transform uh, work with that? With the, well, the, the, the basic idea of the watershed transform is that each of those uh, markers will start uh, a region um, and we, what we have to, to, to imagine is that this uh, gradient um, this gradient image we can uh, see it as a kind of a topographical uh, map um, where the, the dark regions are low regions uh, like valleys and the, uh, the higher values represent uh, mountains or peaks okay so we can see it kind of uh, as if the values were coming out of the screen and making a 3d um, uh, landscape with, uh, with mountains separating uh, large or small uh, valleys and so the idea is that we will start uh, each, um, each marker will start as, as a source uh, for uh, for um, you can imagine water flowing out from it and the, the level uh, within the, the basins will, will rise and rise uh, until uh, and we should make the region grow in the valley until it finds a peak where it will uh, be blocked by the, the peak until uh, the, the water level gets high enough to, um, to get above the, uh, the mountain and the idea that if there was a, a marker in a neighboring valley that was also blocked by the same uh, mountain the two uh, regions will tend to uh, meet at that uh, particular border and so typically we can expect that between this marker and this marker uh, the, 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 the region should grow until, here, until it finds the, the border this one will grow also until it finds the border and they will both meet uh, in here while between those two there is only valley so they will just uh, meet somewhere in the in the middle uh, between uh, between the two um, and this is kind of the general idea so if there was no um, border no strong border between two markers we'll just have an arbitrary border put uh, right in the in the middle um, while if there was uh, a strong gradient somewhere then th these, these gradients will act as natural barriers and as the borders of our region so let's uh, see that in action. Uh, as I said, we will need to use this uh, indices equal false to get the, um, the markers as a uh, binary image. And um, one last thing that we need to do is that we need to give each of those markers a unique uh, number uh, that will be different so that we can identify the, um, it gives kind of, kind of an ID to, to, to each uh, separate region and there is um, a built-in method in scikit-image again called label 
that you can use uh, directly uh, on that and we'll talk a bit uh, more about label in, in uh, a later video but the basic idea is that once we use label on those markers um, each marker will receive a different uh, ID unless uh, it's um, for some of them they, they may be um, connected to each other and if they are connected to each other then they will receive the uh, same uh, label and they, they will start it will uh, allow us to, to have them start the same region so we won't have two regions going from two pixels that are uh, very close together and this is the same idea as the mean distance here uh, if the two are normally if, if they are um, uh, connected to each other uh, the mean distance will not apply because it will consider that it's actually the same um, the same peak um, so we'll uh, call then the watershed method uh, and we'll uh, tell it to grow the regions on the gradient image starting from the markers and then we can use the uh, mark boundaries uh, method here uh, that will just um, be nice for, 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 for display it will display the, the frontiers between the, between the region and we will overlay it on the, uh, on the image and we also show directly the, just the, the plain results of the uh, watershed so this is the what the, the watershed um, uh, method gives us as an output and so we'll have each of the markers will have grown into a region that will be marked by a unique uh, id uh, and we can see that s between some of the of the regions the the border is probably just due here to um, the, um, the 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 distance between the two so it's just the midpoint between the two regions but some uh, border will follow uh, natural um, natural borders found in the image and we can see it, uh, that a lot better if we focus on uh, on the, the overlay uh, here but we can see that um, we will have uh, borders that follow for instance here the, the shadows we have borders following the uh, the mountains uh, borders, some borders are, are, are finding like the, the, the cactuses um, or here again it's probably a shadow um, and, and in the clouds we'll see typi uh, typically the, also the, the lighting pattern that will, um, that will provide us with, uh, with some uh, natural uh, borders. So this uh, kind of segmentation is uh, very noisy. We have uh, mostly a, a, an, an over segmentation and since there are too many regions from what we uh, what we ideally um, want um, but the region that we have the borders that we have will be a lot closer uh, to uh, to things that that make uh, that make uh, semantic uh, sense uh, for for afterward interpreting the the what those regions contain and so one thing that we could do uh, from that is you could try to use this as a, as a first step towards a, a segmentation between the uh, as we've done before between the the, the desert and the, the sky and so one thing that we could do is we could say okay for each of those regions so for each of those regions we'll compute just the mean uh, red green and blue uh, values and um, I'm going to uh, here create a new uh, a new image uh, of the same size as the image um, before, and I will just basically replace uh, the pixel values uh, of the each region by the average uh, RGB um, value within that region, and this will give me uh, this uh, kind of. Um, this kind of image so where I have the uh, the average uh, color within each region and um, and so one thing that I can can try to do now is to use for instance uh, HSV um, to uh, to get the hue and the so let's look at the hue and the saturation and the saturation um, if we look at the hue and saturation I can see that I have um, basically three distinct regions in terms of hue the um, the deserts the uh, part of the sky and then the, the top part of the sky uh, has kind of the same uh, hue as the uh, as the uh, desert so where the part where there is a more uh, light here uh, actually goes back to to the uh, to a kind of more orange uh, hue but that part is also very uh, desaturated and so we can try to use a combination of of those information to say that what we want we want to keep the region where the U uh, is uh, in these kinds of uh, orange tones. So we'll, we'll, we can put a threshold, we can look at the highest value that, that appear here. They are around 0 0.10. So we can say we want to keep the U's 
under, for instance, 0 0.15, and we will want to keep the saturation um, above, let's say, 0 0.3. Uh, uh, and if we um, do that, we can create a new mask that we can overlay on the original image. And here you can see that we have a segmentation that really follows very well the border of the um, of the mountains here, but it just gets uh, into trouble with the uh, shadows, the strong shadows that appear here, that will make for um, uh, regions that are uh, very uh, desatur um, so that, that have a hue. Sorry, so the shadow tends to give a, a, a hue that it's a lot more uh, blue um, to the to the to the landscape, and so the 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 algorithm here cannot uh, distinguish that from the uh, sky. But here, this is this gives us again a, another option for um, for for segmentation um, that is based in this case on first finding. Um, a way to just separate regions that we hope uh, are kind of homogeneous in their uh, semantic uh, nature, um, and then find a way to uh, to 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 classify those regions are as being part of, uh, in this case, the desert or the sky, and using that as our uh, segmentation. Um, so that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.